All right, this will be a video response to Concordance, uh, The Humanist Manifesto 3. Uh, I guess it's the third revision or something. I guess they have multiple revisions of the of the manifesto. You know, got to get up to date with the new technology and the new the new ideas or whatever. So apparently, I don't. I think this is the preamble, or maybe it's the full manifesto. So that's a pretty short manifesto. And the, it, the, the, it, you not you're not going to learn anything about humanism in the four minute forty eight second video that concordance made. You're, you're just not. It's like we we like science and experimentation and observation as opposed to these other people who are opposed to experimentation and observation or something like that. Um, and analysis, you know, we believe that science is best for solving problems as opposed to those other people who are against science or something. Um, and, you know, I, and we could get into like, like how most of your beliefs are and are always going to be non-scientific beliefs, not unscientific, not anti-scientific, but non-scientific. That is, they're not subject to testing and, and stuff like that. So, um, but, but whatever <laughs> that, that's that. And we could get into a discussion about the philosophy of science, but who cares that's that's way above i think what what is said in this video so what is humanism well um, really all humanism is is like think about nationalism right german nationalism i support measures and i will do things to help benefit the well-being of the german nation however that is defined uh, what's humanism it's that only for all humanity that's it right that's humanism um it's utilitarian in a sense that it says what ought to be done you know the archetypal humanist, I mean, of course, people are, are humanists to different degrees, but the archetypal humanist will say, what ought to be done is that which benefits the subjective, self-perceived well-being of all humanity on the aggregate, right? And, and you can get into a little philosophical, well, wait a minute, what if, what if someone has a bigger brain, do they have more neurons and they're able to feel pain more? Does that person, does the value of that person greater than someone with a smaller brain or something? Or blah, blah, you can get into little philosophical things like that. But let's not get, get into any of that. Um, why is this dumb? Why is valuing the well-being of all humanity dumb? Well, it's dumb because uh, <laughs> whichever group becomes humanity now gets the goodies because right? oh in the year 1950 there are 200 million people in the continent of africa today there's over a billion okay so now are they entitled to you know five times as much stuff in relation to europeans whose population has remained static in the same period are we, you know and so that's kind of the, the basic absurdity and why it's it's dumb and can't possibly be applied so where does this where does this humanism thing come from? Well, uh, w w what I saw and it, it comes from Christianity. Um, but what I saw, and and the sign of this in the, in the video is is really is really funny. They say working for society maximizes individual happiness. Now first off, that's a that's an empirical claim, which they just have no evidence. But it's just the preamble. Maybe in the full manifesto, they provide some evidence for it or something. But and, but anyway, um, why did they say that? Why did they say working for society man maximizes individual happiness? Well, because that's because uh, because Christians are happy when they enact the will of God. Um, you know what the Bible says. Who knows what the Bible says? But the church says do good works for people around you. That's what God wants. You know, some sects say He will be judged by His works. Some sects say He will be sex s c c t s will be judged by the acceptance of Jesus. Some will say you need both works and Jesus. Some will say you only need Jesus. But if you do good works, the time spent. Um, in purgatory, not not the Catholic stupid made up stuff, but purgatory where you're actually burning. Um, it's it's the time between you know going from this world to heaven where you, your your body is burning until all your sins are burned. Uh, the less sin you have and the more good works you have, the less burning is gonna you have to go through. You know. Anyway, um, so that's that that's good, and, and it's and it's good to and to engage in these good works for all of God's creation and all of God's souls, uh, because that's what God wants you to do, right? And so people get kind of a dopamine, kind of a, a, a internal psychological reward for engaging in Christian humanism, right? And that's and that's the origin of this, and that's why it exists. Not I, I'm not going to say exclusively in Europe and its offshoots, but primarily in Europe and its offshoots, much more. So than anywhere else, and that's because of um, Christian humanism. Uh, Christian humanism, um, and and uh, the Christian humanism come first off. I believe it stems from the idea that in the judgment, when you, when you when you die and your soul is judged before God, you God doesn't care about how rich you were in your life. God only cares about your works. 
Right. And Christianity was actually unique, and Christianity was actually kind of a departure from the other religion, uh, religions, uh, uh, pagan religions, which did not have this same kind of egalitarian view on your judgment before God. People of higher status are more likely to get into heaven, and I think different religions will say there's different heavens based on class or you know, all sorts of sorts of stuff. And I actually also believe that this Christian humanism and this soul equality, this equality of the soul in the on the day of judgment, is help to undermine feudalism um, but that's just kind of my little theory and that's a you know everyone has their own views of, of history so that's um, and so anyway and so you can see kind of the same thing working for society maximizes individual happiness and they start saying all these things like you have a duty to society and all this stuff just kind of like saying it, just kind of asserting it, and with a and and being happy about it. Um, you can hear it. You can hear it in Concordance voice, but you can also hear it in the text that they're kind of happy about this. Because um, yeah, because because it's it's. It's it's like God is dead, but the music is still playing, and that's what secular humanism is. Right? Secular humanism comes from Christian humanism, right? And it, it exists in primary, in formerly Christian areas. Right? Whereas in areas that did not have Christian humanism, do not have secular humanism. Once they become atheistic, Japan, Korea, China, they don't have this secular humanism uh, problem um, because they never had Christian humanism. Um, so that's really the bulk of this video. Some little minor points at the very end here. He says, <laughs> um, well, he says, and he's just reading the manifesto or the preamble to it. He says, uh, we want a world or something where differences are resolved cooperatively without violence. And that's hilarious. Like, uh, like th this concord does concordance and the, this manifesto or the people on this manifesto not know what laws are? That laws are enforced, you know? When when someone says, here's the taxes you need to pay, that's not a suggestion, okay? Um, and it's not like, and it's not like a powwow. It's not like a little town somewhere. Well, if you don't like to pay the, what you need to pay for the roads in our little area and the, you know, the collective services in our little area that you can leave. No, states claim the entire planet. You can't leave. There's no leaving on here. They claim the entire planet, okay? And they're, they're different, uh, but they claim the entire planet. You can't go anywhere, right? As soon as people start being able to go to Mars, they'll claim that too, okay? And you pay what they tell you to pay. You obey the rules they tell you to pay. And if you resist this persistently, I mean, they're not going to, you know, oh, you jaywalk, bang, 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 you're dead. No, it's you resist persistently. They'll, they'll, they'll strong arm you. They'll do shit to you. They'll garnish your wages. Uh, they'll throw you in jail. But if you resist, if you go to the wall, right, you resist, eventually they're going to kill you, okay? And that's how these disputes are settled, right? That's how these disputes between one person who says, well, I don't believe in Social Security. Well, too bad, because if you don't pay uh, and you resist persistently, uh, you're dead. We're, we're going to put, you know, we're going to put a, some bullets in you, right? And so that's that's how laws are enforced. So to say, you know, we want disputes to be resolved without violence. Oh, so suddenly you're... Um, <laughs> Not only would you have to be anti-status, -sta but you'd have to, like, even in a stateless society where you have polycentric law, laws still enforce violently. Like, we have historical examples of stateless societies, you know, the Mild West, which, I will, by the way, had a lower homicide rate per capita than the incorporated states. They had a higher death rate, that, that is true, but the homicide rate was lower. Um, or, you know, medieval Ireland, right, which had a standard of living about, you know, the same as medieval England. Shitty, but, you know, on par. Uh, uh, you know, medieval Iceland until the, the, the subjugation to the king of Norway. Um, not the subjugation of the king of Norway, but, but the creation of the church steads, which then led to the formation of many states and then subjugation to Norway. Um, even, but even in all the stateless societies, you still have the violent enforcement of laws. Even if there's no state, law is still being violently enforced. All right? And it has to be, because if you don't violently enforce laws... You know, I mean, Stefan Molyneux has this idea that you can have laws without violent enforcements. You just have these, these all these complicated, indirect ways of, of enforcing it. And I've actually argued that, that no, you can't do that, because what will happen is that the people... I don't want to get into that here. I don't think enough people believe that to even really deal with it. And at the very end, he says, you know, democracy is a duty. Uh, you have a duty to participate in democracy and in society, and society is democracy. Uh, and, and, of course, what is democracy? Uh, it's just the violent enforcement of the will of the voting majority. That is, whoever, however expanded the franchise is, 
people who can vote, they vote, their will is then violently enforced. And that's that's the ideal. Now, in practice, we have representation. People think that representation best reflects the will. Sometimes it's direct democracy that best reflects the will of the voting majority. But ultimately, what it comes down to is the violent enforcement of the will of the voting majority. That's all it is. So being a fan of democracy is not, <laughs> you know, if the democracy says, you know, shut down all dissident speech, well, that's democracy. You know, if democracy says kill the Jews, uh, lynch the queers, um, and keep the Negroes in bondage, right, that's democracy, and that's it. Okay, so this worshipping of democracy is just dumb, uh, and it's not necessarily going to produce more enlightened. It's going to produce as enlightened an idea, a world as the voting majority um, will do, and moreover, if you think you're more enlightened by however we define it, enlightenment um uh democracy it, it, prevent, it prevents separation and decentralization so for example you know the more democratic a place is the less and the less individual sovereignty there is the less you can have separate areas doing their own thing you know and saying hey these people these secular humanists they seem to have it you know they seem to have all their ducks in a row and that, that i think we should try to emulate those secular humanists Right. Whereas if there's a democracy, then and, and the majority of people are not secular humanists and are not Christian humanists either, they're just, you know, <laughs> Muslim fascists or whatever, um, then none of that's going to happen. Right? And, and you're going to get stasis. You're going to get this majoritarian stasis and it blows. Okay, but that's... I'm going off on tangent. The main point is humanism is dumb. It comes from Christianity. It reduces to absurdity, you know, in two seconds of thought. I think it's like a Santa Claus thing. You know, you just think about it for like a few seconds and immediately it goes, wow, that's really dumb. I, I, and, and, and the temptation is to say, wow, I was really dumb for thinking that. No, you weren't really dumb for, for being a humanist. You were not thinking is what was happening, right? It's not that you're so dumb that you can think your way into humanism. No, you, you don't think your way into humanism. You not think and you are a humanist for whatever reason, right? You become a humanist by not thinking. It's, it's not that you're so that dumb. Um, kind of like, you know, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and, you know, the biblical God or the Islamic God or whatever.